Hey everybody, welcome again to another edition of The Tom Pippen Show with John Dodds. He is the man who, he's our igniter. He keeps <laughs> us going. He's our Aaron Rodgers. You can find us at TomPippins.com or The Tom Pippen Show. John Dodds, we appreciate our Packers historian. He's a friend. He's the hardest working man I know in the biz. Plus, he has a real job. And we also are <laughs> thankful to say that we're brought to you by our good friends from WSS Sports here in their beautiful studio. So it's a, it's a great partnership. We talked uh, in an earlier segment about the win over the Vikings to put Matt LaFleur's team to 2-0, first time a Packers coach starts his career in that fashion since one Vince Lombardi. Now you look ahead to the Denver Broncos, 0-2. They gave a game to the Bears, who should be 0-2. But, John, before we delve into that, we talked about the fact that we wanted to chat about LaFleur and also Aaron Rodgers and an apparent spat at the sideline. You were there. You were in the press box, as always, helping out Wayne Larrabee, the fine broadcaster, uh, and Larry McCarron on the radio broadcast. How did you see that? They both downplayed it at the end. We're competitors. It'll probably happen again. Don't worry about it. I, I wouldn't worry about it at all. I don't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, I used to see uh, Mike Holmgren go absolutely ballistic at Brett Favre, and then Brett Favre would get his country up, and Andy Reid would always step in and say, there was one, there was one audible I remember Brett Favre made, and, and Holmgren just blew up. What, what do you mean putting him over here? You never put him over there. And, and, he, and Favre was trying to say something, and Andy Reid goes, that was on me. You know, I told him to do that. He goes, you told him to do that. You did. So then finally, after about the third time, Holmgren realized, all right, <laughs> ha! you're trying to... You're, 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 you're buffering I, here, you're right? Trying to, you're trying to say lay off of him, yeah. and he, he finally did. And, and the, rest, the rest is history. I mean, Favre, you know, he broke the Colt. He finally structured the Colt, mm -hmm. and the Colt took him to Hall of Fame stature. Obviously, this isn't the same thing. It's not as if he's no. going to tame this Colt. The Colt has been around for all these years. But will they come to a compromise, John? Do you see it happening? Obviously, Aaron's an incredible competitor. Is Matt LaFleur the same? Of course he is. And you just, I, to me, there, there has to be some concern. Will Rodgers adhere to what LaFleur wants to do? We talked about it before the beginning of the regular season. Two games in, I think there's still a question mark. I think there's frustration probably because they just didn't have enough time in the preseason to get everything ironed out. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, I, th I think it was a great move putting all the plays on his, on his uh, arm because now LaFleur can say 33. That's the play. He knows what the play you is. You said this could happen, and yeah. it seemed like it was a lot faster, especially early on where they jumped out 21 nothing. We're looking ahead, not back. But I, I'm more concerned about the dynamic between the head coach and the future Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, I think that as Rodgers and the offense become more comfortable, there'll be less frustration. I think Rodgers was angry that where people were lined up and the routes that were called on the defense, that's what he's, he said, we should do something else. That's what the disagreement, I believe, was. But I think that's healthy. I mean, you get, you get older quarterbacks, you're always going to have that. Dan Marino used to, you know, scream at Don Shula. I mean, Dan, John Elway got Dan Reeves fired. I mean, you're just, and Mike Shanahan came in. So you're always going to have that. You, you want that. Um, but I do think, we've, we talked about it before, it, it's interesting that, this isn't Aaron Rodgers. You have to make a call. You have to make a play within the structure of the pocket and make that quick read. No, this is, he's still making the calls. He's going back and forth. It's just a different offense, different cadence. He's got different, different signals. He's calling out different colors and key words. So they all have to get on the same page. And I think the difference between week one and week two was night and day. I think it's going to get better as they get going. And as long as the offensive line, especially the tackles, hold up, Bakhtiari, that, that was a Bakhtiari and Balaga were terrific against some pretty good defensive ends. So on the whole, I thought they played really well. And I think Rodgers, as he and as the younger guys get more familiar with the offense and what to do. The interesting thing about LaFleur is he, he is a play-action fake guy, and that's where the NFL is heading. I think, uh, I think I saw a stat where 41% of all runs now are play-action fake, 
And if you have a running game and you're under the center and you fake it to Aaron Jones, there were times he faked it to Aaron Jones, and Rodgers is a master yeah. at, the, at the handoff, and he's really uh, adept at uh, doing that. Well, anyway, that froze the linebackers, and if that freezes the linebackers, now the wide receivers can cut over the middle with bigger windows because the linebackers now are late. So that's kind of the little floor thing. It's, it's do the... Uh, it's run the wide zones. It's it's do the, the uh, kind of the end around type of thing, and then fake it. But then use him as a safety valve outside. And by keeping it outside, it kept Minnesota prevented Minnesota from blitzing up the a gap, which it seems like they were doing a lot in the McCarthy offense. You mentioned that uh, they were so good early, and, and they were there was rhythm and what have you. It was quick jumping out to that 21 nothing lead. Do you see a difference already in the Matt LaFleur offense versus Mike McCarthy's, which obviously had become stayed? The play-action faking is a lot different. There was more shotgun. And there's all sorts of reasons why you run shotgun. I remember in the uh, Mike Sherman era when we had more access to the uh, assistant coaches asking uh, Rossley, why do you run shotgun a certain way and why sometimes you run it under center? Fran Tarkenton used to say that he hated shotgun because by the time he took his eye off the secondary and the ball came back, the DBs could move 10 yards and fool him on coverages. He liked to take it from the center and take it all the way back. I asked Rosley one time, why, why would he not? And he said, it's all on Amon Green. I said, well, why is it not Amon Green? And he said, if you're, if you're under the center and somebody blitzes from, say, the outside, you roll the coverages so the tackle comes out to the outside linebacker and then the guard takes the end, and Amon Green ha now has to fill in the middle, and that's usually a 300-pound defensive lineman or a Gilbert Brown type that you have to hit. And he said, we don't want Amon Green to have that wear and tear by the end of the year, he's gonna get 300 carries anyway. So we run the shotgun, so when somebody blitzes from the outside, Amon Green picks up the outside guy, who will be a smaller player, less wear and tear on our guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's, there's all sorts of different reasons why you would do it. Uh, with, with, uh, with Green Bay, it's the, it's the play action fake. It's, can you, have a legitimate threat at running back where if Rodgers comes back and hands him fake handoff, they're going to bite. And that's what they, that's what they did. I mean, Aaron you, have Jones. To, you have to. Aaron Jones, right? Legitimate threat. He's legitimate. He's a legitimate cutter. And, but you can run the Viking defense as good as they are. He's not as good as the Bear defense, which the Bears are big and they're quick. Mm -hmm. The Bears are, those Bear defensive linemen are terrific. You know, they kind of died in Denver in the fourth quarter in the altitude, it seemed, last week. But uh, Minnesota, you can move those guys out easier. Mm -hmm. Denver Broncos, 28th on offense under Joe Flacco, the former Baltimore Raven. You would think that this is an opportunity again for the second-ranked Packers defense, short sample size, I understand, to make some hay. Yes, it's... You would think, now, they did, compared to what the Packers did in week one, Denver was gained much more. Flacco almost had 300 yards passing against the Bears. The key to the Bears, though, that beat them is the short passing game, and that's what they, that's what they executed. How they lost that game was just hard to believe. They're going to come in. They're going to be desperate. They have to That's be. That's the one thing that bugs me, other yeah. than the, the Bears not being 1-1. One one. Yeah. Or 0-2, oh I should say. They are 1-1. One one. Yeah, with the, with the... Desperation time for Vic Fangio, the former Bears defensive coordinator and the first-year head coach. And Ed Donatel is his defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. the former defensive yeah. coordinator for the Packers yeah. under... God, he's still uh, around. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with Denver, their deal is outside pass rushing from their linebackers. They have Chubb and Von Miller. Those are the two guys, they're elite. So the thing is, the, the odd thing is after two weeks, they're the only team in the NFL without a sack and without a turnover. 
And the reason why they've done that is the is Oakland with Derek Carr and um, Trubisky with Chicago. They got the ball out on three-step drops in two in less than two and a half seconds. So it's get the ball out. So is that what you think you'll see on Sunday from Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau Field? Exactly. It's it's going to be very conservative, short, get the ball out, and uh, their secondary is good, but their secondary is much better with a pressure, and they're not. They've only had two pressures, and they asked Von Miller about it, and Von Miller and uh, Chubb were saying, you can't get a pressure if the ball's out already. Right. So the ball gets out quickly. So I think this, this, this game comes down to getting the ball out quickly and keeping them on the field, and then the defense getting turnovers. Which they did against the Vikings, four Which, of them. They had one... The Packers had no turnovers against the Bears and generated one on the interception by Amos. Last week, the, Bear, the uh, Packers had two turnovers. They had the fumbled snap, and then they had Allison on the sidelines fumbling. But they generated four turnovers from the Vikings, two interceptions. You win that, you win that uh, category, and Mike McCarthy used to talk about it. You're in good stead in the NFL or, or any level of football. But Flacco has been a good addition for them. He's been playing. He's been playing well. He's a solid veteran, right? He's a step above what they've had before. They have two nice running backs. One Freeman is probably their better running back, uh, Royce Freeman, from Oregon. He's a good player. Um, so how do they match up against that Packers D of Mike Pettin? Well, uh, I think the Packers uh, match up really well. And again, this is going to be a broken record. If King can stay healthy. That defense. Now, in the Viking locker room, Thalen and Diggs, I'm over there in the corner, and Diggs didn't want to talk because he was embarrassed over the helmet incident yes. where it cost his team a point, basically, with a long extra point. They said that King and Alexander were the two best, maybe the two best cornerbacks in the league. Why? Now that's high praise. That could be high praise from How a division. How long has it been since that's happened in title town, John? Uh, Willie Buchanan and Ken Ellis. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll say 1972, but yeah. it's been, uh, or Charles Woodson and, yeah. and yeah, uh, more recently. Yeah, Harris. But um, that was high praise, but that, that's really interesting. When King stays healthy and can guard one of the guys and can free up Alexander to guard the slot, it seems like everybody's copying New England where you put a small guy in the slot, like a Randall Cobb, and you have him run around in space. Well, uh, Alexander made some exceptional plays on Sunday. One of them was a little pass out of the flat to the fullback, and he wasn't even guarding. He was guarding a wide receiver, Diggs, and then he reacted to the fullback coming out of the backfield. They threw the ball, I think it was in the second quarter, and he bolted, and the fullback caught it, and he punched it out of his hands, and the, it was 21 nothing. The ball came down. They picked it up, and they were running it in for a touchdown. They blew it dead. It was really close, but it was a good call. It, it should have been dead. But that just goes to show you what, he, what these guys bring in terms of playmaking ability. You put Savage in there, who's still learning, but you have... So you have the safeties with a pulse, Amos and Savage. And, and Savage, as you're well aware, you were there, John, made a huge impact in that game against the Vikings. Made the tip that... Messed with the vision, which made the ball go up in the air. Preston Smith comes yeah. down with the interception. So uh, they have playmaking ability, and it, it's kind of odd to say this, but if assuming the Packers remain relatively injury-free, the modus operandi for the Green Bay Packers might be Rodgers, hey, don't take any chances, mm -hmm. don't make any turnovers, Let's get our punter who's doing really well. Mm -hmm. And if there's an exchange of punts, you gain 10, 15 yards. J.K. Scott's really solid, isn't he? He wasn't as good as he was in week two as he was against the Bears, but still against the Vikings, he did a good job. He did a good job. A lot of heavy air, real humid that, that day. But when I'm, when I'm thinking back to great Packer teams, the, the two Super Bowl teams, they had Hendrick, where every time there was an exchange, there was an exchange of punts, and it seemed like, Desmond Howard would return the punt X, or Hendrick would kick 15 yards more. So the, the field got shorter and shorter 
as the Packers punted. This year, that could be the case also with, with J.K. Scott, where you're punting, but if you don't make a mistake, so unlike the Brett Favre era where Favre's thinking, if we don't make this first down, we're gonna have a short punt and we're gonna lose because the other team's gonna score. Don't make the mistake, punt, let the other team make a mistake, and can the Packer defense turn over Flacco? So this is a, I mean, it's been a decade be, since we've looked at something like this where usually it's, can the Packers score 50 to their 40? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like That's the mentality right. that you have. This is a whole different mentality, but with pass rush that they have, with their front six, they can do it with three, four, five, or six, and they can disguise it, and with their backfield. It's, it's really an interesting, it's going to be an interesting year. I'm thinking of the Super Bowl 45 and Super Bowl 31. Obviously, great defenses. There was more on offense, more weapons for Brett Favre than Aaron Rodgers has. But as you say, it's a nice formula for winning in the NFL, and it seems to be so far so good for the Packers. Play the, the winning championship-style defense, and then uh, the offense hopefully will do enough. And as you point out, don't turn the ball over. You get past Denver. If you do, you're 3-0. You have Philly coming in, I believe, on Thursday night. All of a sudden, this thing sets up pretty well. Again, you have to win this week, and you have to check out the injuries. They have some tough games. Philadelphia and Dallas, those are going to be... Now, Philly, is that the short turnaround, or is there a buy-in between? I think they have to play the short Sunday and then Thursday, Thursday, and then? And then it's Dallas. Yeah, it's a definitely a tough schedule against great defenses. But um, I think that slowly, I liked the trend line for the Packer offense. And again, we're gonna get, I think, really fast outside linebacker pass rush. The, weak, the weakness of Denver is uh, their offensive line. Their offensive left tackle has had six holding penalties in two weeks. Wow. So, yeah, Garrett Bowles, he has right. six, six penalties. So that's a, and the fans were really booing him uh, pretty good against the Bears, but against the Bears, that's, th you know, you'd rather have a hold than have your quarterback Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Well, you just like the way things are trending so far. We hope to be back with you next week, everybody, with our partners here at WSS Sports. For John Dodds, the Packers historian, I'm Tom Pippins. You've been tuning in, when we greatly appreciate it, to the Tom Pippins Show with John Dodds. Find us at TomPippins.com or the Tom Pippins Show. And remember, the Aaron Rodgers of this, the very good, healthy Aaron Rodgers of this little program here, this podcast, is J.D. John, thanks again. Great to be with you. And you're the Brett Favre. I'm Brett Favre, huh? Well, they used to call me John Milan in my sportscasting days, a fine weatherman. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you and hopefully see you again.